What we have here today is a, it's a typical Harley Davidson repair. Um, throughout my career, 30 plus years, this is the type of scenario that, that kills the, the customer's enthusiasm for owning their motorcycle. And it honestly just makes them feel like now uh, their beautiful baby looks shabby. Um, with the, the car rep um, products, we're going to do um, a spot repair on this. And we're gonna see, uh, see how that works out. And I'm gonna show you all the processes. Uh, I may not talk about a lot of them, I'm just gonna kind of motor through these. But by all means, watch along, learn, live, criticize, whatever. But this is what I do. Uh, so in this scenario, we are all the way down to the bare metal. Um, even if we weren't, we still have to feather out the chip, so that's gonna bring us down to bare metal anyway. I'm gonna feather this out with some dry 400. Um, I prefer to do as much dry sanding as possible, especially when I'm working with raw steel. Uh, I don't wanna introduce any kind of moisture into that and cause rusting. We all know what water does to steel. And motorcycles, they have a tendency of doing that. So I just wanna feather it out until it's smooth. I don't wanna put any, uh, and this is an industry term, so don't anybody criticize me, uh, what we call buttholes. Uh, effectively, that's a low spot in the paint and the material you've got paint build up and once you, uh, if you just sand that out to where it feels, you don't feel any edges, that creates a low spot. So I'll feather this out. Harley Davidson is known for having thick paint, very thick paint, especially their clear coat. So if you have an itty bitty teeny tiny little chip, there's other approaches to addressing that. I'm going to try and keep this repair, my sanding, as small as possible. So the more you sand, the more you scratch, the more you got to fix. Like I said, Harley paint is really thick. Okay, now we got all that feathered out nice and pretty. So I've got everything feathered out with 400 dry. Now I need to give myself something for the paint to stick to, and I'm gonna use a gray scotch bright. Uh, actually, this is USC, but very similar product, industry standard. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a tooth. I don't wanna beat the hell out of it, and I'm not putting a lot of pressure. These are not uh, pots and pans that have been sitting in the sink for weeks. Back to our degreaser. Got it scuffed up. I'm gonna go back to our degreaser. Yes, do the whole panel. If you don't do the whole panel, you get what's called residue mapping, and you don't want that. The residue mapping grabs your overspray, and it looks like you wiped overspray onto your panel. You don't want to do that. All right, then we're gonna come in with our sealer 2K epoxy primer. This is a sealer epoxy primer, not a high build. So again, what this does, this makes the paint adhere to the surface as well as uh, fills any micro imperfections that really affect the paint. Something else, and this I think covers aerosol industry as a whole. 
that's not two minutes. That's not three minutes. That's two or three shakes. It's critical to get everything inside this can at the bottom, at the top, on the sides, because you never know how these are stored. It really does have to be shaken up. If you want it to work right, shake it up. If you don't shake it up, you got to wipe it off and do it all over again. And then you're discouraged and you hate what you're doing and hell with it, I don't want to do it anymore. So we got two things here. Uh, first one is our sealer. This is what makes the paint adhere to the surface. Um, any misconceptions about um, uh, base coats, not the 2Ks, not, this, not in this particular instance, but you need a sealer. The, the sealer adheres the paint to the surface. It seals any kind of the, uh, the imperfections, the sand scratches. Uh, and in the event that we did a little bit of putty work, it would fill in the, uh, the pinholes, the pores of the, the putty. Putty is effectively a, a sponge. It looks just like coral sponge. That, uh, each one of those little pockets of, of uh, the holes in the, the filler, the little pinholes, and these are microscopic. Um, they actually have gases in them, and when you cover them with paint, those gases want to expand, and it creates a, a fisheye or a pinhole, and you'll see that, and that's where, uh, where our sealer comes into play. The other thing that we're going to use on this is spot blender. What spot blender does is any, <clears throat> any speckles that go outside of the area that we're really trying to focus on. That's usually what gives you away in a spot repair. You'll see a nice shiny spot around where you're really focusing and you'll see a dry edge ring around that and that's your dry spray. The spot blender burns those into the paint and smooths everything out. This is another thing you gotta have. If you don't have it, you're gonna see your blend no matter what. And I have the bad habit too. The, uh, the car rep guys have been climbing all over my back. I put it away, I start it. I don't clear the nozzle or any of that stuff. It, it is important and I know this as a professional, I know better than to do that. But if you wanna keep the integrity of the nozzle and the can and the way it sprays, of course you have to clean it. It's just like paint, cleaning your paint gun. If you want it to work right, of course you have to clean it. Spray it upside down, clear, clear it out. Everything's nice and clear. I don't want to bomb this. Uh, a lot of times with, uh, and I'm, I've got a bad habit. Again, I've been getting yelled at for this. Um, when you're using aerosols, you want to get in, get out, get it done, and move on. Uh, you still got to be patient with this. You don't want to overdo this. The way this product works is you need to keep your distance, about six to 10 inches away from the surface. Uh, I have a three inch rattle can uh, distance, and again, I've been messing stuff up. So I want to do this right, and I want you to know to do this right. You got to keep your distance. Uh, the quality of this tip, uh, in my opinion, is, is really, really good. It's, it rivals a lot of paint guns. There's no barbelling. It's not heavy on the bottom or the top, and it's not heavy in the middle. It's got a very nice flat fan, which is really nice. So all the way through this process, tack rag. No, you can't use your hand as a tack rag. Um, because you've got oil on your hands, so you're just going to muck it up and get your greasy fingers all over it. The tack rag grabs all the dust, and you want that dust free all the way through. Even if you have a tiniest little speck that you don't see in the end result uh, right away, you will see it later on. Once everything dries and all the solvents are out of the paint, it starts to shrink wrap around that tiny little speck of dust. And I'm not saying we won't have any, but it's best to make certain at the time that you don't. So always use a tack rag. I don't want to oversaturate that. There's solvents in here. This is a solvent base. If you start building it too fast, too quick, too wet, uh, those solvents start to get underneath the layers and that's when you start seeing wrinkling or ringing. Take it easy. This is a spot blender. 
this whole edge here, this will look nice and pretty. This over here looks nice and pretty. These small speckles, these are the things that we want to get rid of with the spot blender. And those just kind of burned them in. Bang, boom. And we let that dry. And see, I almost screwed up again. Get into that habit, Ryan. All right, so we've got our sealer down uh, that's did a really nice job, I think, in, in terms of what we're doing here. Um, fills all the, the micro imperfections. We've got our spot blender on there that burns all the, the overspray specs in. Now we're ready for our gloss black top coat. That's an epoxy 2K top coat. Um, I know there's no plunger on the bottom. How could it possibly be a, a 2K? Uh, there's science to it. Don't, uh, I'm a painter. Don't, don't expect me to science you. Um, but so far with the test, we've got some pieces up there that we've done with this stuff. Um, ridiculously impressed with this. I mean, this is, I, I kick myself and cuss the industry out a little bit. Like where the hell has this been? Honestly. And we come back in with our spot blender and we burn those specs in. That's one coat. We'll do that again when that coat dries, but it gives you an idea. So now we're gonna go into our, our second coat. See, Brian almost did it too close. I stopped myself. First coat is kind of your, uh, your tie coat. The second coat, get it on nice and pretty. Get it flowed out. And come back in with the spot blender. And all the areas that are dried, that's where you want to hit with your spot blender. Burns all those speckles in. Burning, burning. Now, let's say this completely blew up in my face um, and I'm just completely not happy with it. I don't like what it's doing. Uh, not in this particular case. This is actually not too bad. Um, uh, a lot of people, the DIYers, okay, now what do I do? In my professional opinion, I've got plenty of material left in all my cans. I got my sealer, I got my base, my top coat. I've got everything that I still need. Uh, if I was just completely dissatisfied with this, I would take a lacquer thinner on a towel and I'd wipe it off. Start all over again fresh, don't let it dry. Um, some people will say, well, let it dry and try again tomorrow. You don't want to keep pounding material on there because it's going to keep it from drying properly. It's better just wipe it off, clean slate, and go at it again. Learn the lessons that you, you came across while you were doing it the first time and apply those lessons the second time and even in a third time. Uh, when it comes to uh, doing things yourself and you're not in this industry and you don't know the tricks of the trade, it's very intimidating to get into this. Um, it can either go really well or go horribly wrong. Um, so it's, it's best if you run into any problems, wipe it off and try again. That's my biggest advice. Um, saying that as a professional in the industry, I've wiped off a lot of stuff. I know that because I've been down that road a lot of times. Again, let everything dry. We're mm -hmm. in the desert right now. The shop is creeping towards hundred degrees. So it's going to do different things here than it will in a, a, a different environment that has a little more humidity. Uh, a lot of times the humidity helps a lot, um, but hell with it. We're here in Las Vegas doing this in a hot ass shop. That's as real as it gets. <laughs> Let that dry. Third and final coat with the gloss black. 
2K epoxy. This is epoxy. It's our epoxy color. I'll say that like I'm being a weirdo or something. In, in our world, we don't use epoxy base coats, and this isn't actually an epoxy base coat. It's a, an epoxy single stage. I'm going to keep saying that because to me that's still, what the hell? When the hell did they come out with that? Spot blender again, blend, burn in our blends. Make the little specklies go away. All right, so at this stage, we prepped it, we scotch brighted it, we've cleaned it, we've got our sealer, we've got our top coat, which is this, it's a, the 2K single stage epoxy gloss black, and we've got our spot blender on there. The blender melts all the speckles. At this point, it looks um, worse than it really is. So this is executed properly, Afterwards, what I'm going to do is uh, hand rub some, some glaze on it, and that's going to polish out the, uh, the spot blender and kind of burn it back. That way we don't have all the, uh, the chemical residue right there. And at that point, our, our spot blend is, is done. Again, it's a little hot in here. The painter in me just wants to bomb and flow that out. Uh, but at the same time, I want this to dry correctly. So. Tell the painter and you, take it easy, take it easy. This can all be polished out and it looks fantastic when it's all dry. Let it dry. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna watch this dry and I'm gonna go to lunch. Make your shit look good. 